Hey everyone, today I want to do a comparison test of cheap versus expensive aluminum racing jack. Both of these jacks are rated at one and a half tons and they are both sold through Harbor Freight. This is the standard Pittsburgh aluminum racing jack. It retails for $99. This is their brand new Daytona high performance aluminum racing jack that retails for $299. So the big question is, is it worth spending three times as much on this jack or should you just go with something like this? Now, Harbor Freight does offer a third alternative. They have a standard Daytona aluminum racing jack that retails for about 135. Judging from the specs and the overall construction of that jack, it seems to be very similar to this Pittsburgh. A little bit of an improvement in some of the specs, but overall, it's, it's pretty darn close to this Pittsburgh from what I can tell. So basically, just, I just want to focus on these two jacks today. I want to go over the design and the dimensions of both of these jacks. And I also want to throw them underneath my shell to see how they actually feel under low. So let's go ahead and get started with this Pittsburgh jack. Now the aluminum Pittsburgh jacks have been around for a number of years now. This was their premium series before the introduction of the Daytona jacks about five years ago. Now this jack is about 10 years old. It's only seen some light residential use and it's in very good shape. I relubricated all the moving parts prior to this test and I also rebled it and checked the fluid level and it's in perfectly good operational shape. I used to use this on my Dodge Viper years ago. Now they've made a lot of different versions and revisions of this jack throughout the years. The specs have changed a little bit, the length has changed a little bit, the height characteristics minimum maximum have changed, but the overall design and structure has been pretty constant. The only big change I've seen with this jack is on the newer versions, which I assume is a cost cutting measure to keep this around the $100 mark, is they have changed the lifting arm from aluminum on these older versions to what appears to be steel on the new versions. So that's really the only main difference that I've seen and it has changed the weight. I put this thing on my scale and it came up as around 26 pounds. The new version, they rate it at 33 pounds. So I assume that that weight change came from the new ones being a little bit longer than this one and primarily the lifting arm being changed from aluminum to steel. And to make sure the calibration was good on my scale, I put the other jack on there. They rate that at 36 pounds. It came up just a hair under 36. So the calibration overall is very close, especially for something like this. So overall, this is a pretty good blend of aluminum and steel. Typically you'll see that on aluminum racing jacks, especially inexpensive ones as a cost saving measure. Obviously the frame rails are aluminum. In this case, the lifting arm is aluminum. The housing assembly for the actual pump itself, the handle, the handle support, the wheel supports are all aluminum and the uh, side handle as well. There is some steel on this, the wheels, the pad, uh, the side support arms underneath the main lifting arm are steel as well as the lower arms are steel, the top of the jack itself. Obviously any hardware itself is going to be steel. So this is kind of what you see usually with inexpensive racing jacks, about a 50-50 blend of aluminum and steel to keep the cost down. Overall, this is a pretty compact jack this is pretty good for anybody who wants mobility that you really won't find with a steel jack. This, even the new ones being 33 pounds, this is not too big. This is the new one's about 22 and a half inches overall length. So very compact. You can put this in a car and it's really not gonna add a lot of weight to the car. You can take this with you, whether you need to do roadside repairs, you wanna take it to the track. Overall, a good jack for someone who doesn't really have a big budget, but wants to get something a little bit more transportable, a little bit more high performance than a standard steel jack is going to be. The minimum lift height on the current version is about three and a half inches. Max height is about 13 and seven eighths. And this is about four and a half pumps to get to maximum height. Overall, it has a pretty good feeling overall on this. When you're jacking it up, it feels pretty solid overall. Uh, I've seen many reviews on these things over the years. The only concern I've seen mainly with these things is that you have to make sure you're lifting on really flat and level ground. The jacks can deflect a little bit if you're lifting, especially at your maximum height and you're at the maximum weight rating and you can maybe be on the grounds that are a little bit uneven. You have that possibility. The aluminum on the rails is quarter inch or four sixteenths of an inch thick. And that's the same thing on the actual rails, side rails of the lifting arm itself. So it's not super thick aluminum. It seems to be pretty good for what it's designed for, but it's not the thickest jack out there. It's also pretty smooth coming down. It comes down a little quick, even not, a, not under load, but it's pretty smooth overall. The handle itself is about 36 inches tall, so it's not a super long handle, 
So when you're getting into more heavy loads, you kind of need to put a little bit more muscle into it because you don't have as much leverage having a shorter handle. But for that person with a little bit of a tight budget, I think this is a pretty good way to go overall. So now let's take a look and compare it to that high performance Daytona aluminum racing jack. Now comparing the Pittsburgh aluminum racing jack to this brand new Daytona high performance racing jack, you can instantly see some very significant differences. This jack's a little bit larger, it's about two and a half inches longer and about an inch and a half wider. That's going to give you a much more stable footprint, especially when you're at maximum lifting height, at maximum lifting capacity. There's also a very significant difference in the way that this is machined. You can see a lot of the machining quality on the sides of this jack. The way the Daytona is carved into the sides, the way the edges are rounded off on the machining, the way the holes are drilled into the arm to help save weight, you can tell that a lot of thought and a lot of effort was put into the design of this jack overall. Another huge difference is the, the side rails and the rails for the lifting arms themselves. Seven sixteenths of solid aluminum. That is almost double what the Pittsburgh is. That is four sixteenths, this is seven sixteenths. So that's going to give this jack a much more sturdy and stable feel, especially at max lifting capacity, at max lifting height, if you're on ground that isn't perfectly even. This is much less likely to deflect under heavy loads, having the aluminum be almost twice as thick on this jack. This is also a true aluminum racing jack. As I stated before, with an inexpensive aluminum racing jack, it's not uncommon to see them blend steel and aluminum to help save money. With this jack, this is probably about 90 plus percent aluminum. The only steel on this jack is the hardware, the very lower arms, the cap for the hydraulic unit itself, and some of the various underpinnings, the springs, things like that are steel, but virtually everything else is aluminum on this jack. The side rails, the lifting arm, the side support arms, the pad, the wheels, the handle support, the handle itself, the side handle, the housing for the, the actual hydraulic unit itself, all aluminum. So this is really a true aluminum racing jack. And even though this is a physically larger jack with a little bit of a better lifting range, you only pay a penalty of three pounds. So this is 36 pounds as opposed to 33 on the new Pittsburgh aluminum racing jacks. Uh, like I said, this has a little bit of a better range of motion. This is two and three eighths inches down all the way, and it's about 16 and three eighths up all the way. So you're going down a little bit more than an inch lower than the Pittsburgh is going to, and you're going up about two and a half inches or so more than the Pittsburgh can. It's also four and a half pumps to maximum height. And what makes this a little bit easier to use, especially under heavy loads, is the handle itself is 10 inches longer. So you have a lot more leverage, especially when you're lifting it under maximum load. So this also has the nice transportable capability being lightweight, just like the Pittsburgh is. You can easily take this handle off and put it in the trunk of a car or something really small. You can bring it with you and you don't add a lot of weight to the vehicle if you wanna bring it to do but roadside repairs, bring it to the racetrack. It will do everything the Pittsburgh will do. But as you would expect, you're paying a lot of money for quality here. And this overall has a much more solid and smooth feeling as you would expect. This is gonna be for somebody who is willing to invest the money in something expensive. And if you have the budget to do it, uh, I think that this is a much sturdier and stronger jack overall. So let's go ahead and throw this under the side of my Shelby. And I wanna see how these actually feel under load side by side. All right, so we'll start off with the Pittsburgh. Now I have a jacking around this car so I can lift it from the center. I can lift one side of the car at a time. And I already have the jack correctly positioned. So, I mean, right away, you can just tell us, you need to put a little bit more muscle into it just because the arm itself is shorter. You have a little bit more play in the actual handle where it goes into the handle support itself. So you do need to put a little bit more muscle into this thing. This car is about 3,700 pounds. I'm lifting roughly 50% of it, so, uh, but yeah, I definitely have to put a lot more muscle into this jack just to get it up. So right now I have both wheels off the ground on the car. I'm not gonna go to max capacity or max height rather. I just wanna put some significant weight on this thing just to see how it feels. So the wheels are probably two, three inches off the ground. Um, it's smooth, but you need to put some muscle into it going up. So let's see how the release valve articulates. I was very careful there, but it's coming down really slow. So you gotta be pretty careful. I did have to put some effort into it, but make sure I didn't go too quickly. So the release valve's okay. 
it's not bad. And you do need a significant amount of strength to crack it loose and not go too quickly. But overall, that was pretty good. Especially with lower cars like this, you don't want to slam them to the ground. So I did have to put some muscle into that, but not bad. It moves around pretty easily. Like I said, I greased up the wheels before I started this. I wanted to make this as fair a fight as possible. Uh, it gets the job done, but like I said, that's the main thing. I did have to put a significant amount of muscle into this thing. This jack's still in good shape. It does see some light residential use, but that's pretty much it, but uh, not bad. So let's go ahead and check, do the same test with the Daytona. All right, and now the Daytona. I tried to put it in roughly the same spot that I had the Pittsburgh in. Wow, right away, this takes a lot less effort. I can, I can comfortably do this with one hand. I'll try to get this off the ground about the same amount that I had it with the Pittsburgh. All right, now I'll switch to two hands. I'm starting to put some serious weight on this thing. The tires feel like they're about off the ground at this point. Yeah, we're just off the ground. I'll probably go to the same height I had as before, but wow, this takes a lot less effort. That handle length probably makes the main difference, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of a geometry difference in this jack as well. So just right away, you can feel there's a little bit less play in the handle. There's virtually none, it's a very tiny amount and it just has an overall more solid feeling. So we're roughly, probably maybe a little bit higher, but we're pretty close to about what the Pittsburgh was at. So let's see how this articulate, the uh, release valve feels when I articulate it. Oh wow, this thing cracks loose really without a lot of effort. And then now we're coming down. Wow, that was, that's a lot better. You don't have to put a lot of strength into it and then make sure you don't go too far and have the car slam down. Wow. That's really nice. I mean, it's still coming. It's, that release valve is really easy to crack in this thing. Let me speed it up a little bit. There's sticky tires, you can hear them uh, creaking on the ground. And that's it. Wow. Wow, so the, uh, the up was a lot less effort and down was uh, much easier to lower it without having to worry about uh, going too quick and having to slam it shut real fast so you don't slam the car on the ground. Um, being this jack is longer, it obviously doesn't have the steering. It doesn't steer as nicely in terms of the, probably the steering circle of it, this being a longer jack, but that's a pretty minimal thing. I'd much rather have a nicer lifting jack and you know, have it be a little bit longer. Maybe I have to move it a couple extra times just to position it perfectly, but overall, Wow, what a, there was a significant difference with, uh, with this Daytona jack. So let's do some final thoughts before we wrap this up. All right, so final thoughts. Inexpensive versus expensive aluminum racing jack. Which one do you go with? I think if you're on a little bit more of a limited budget or you really don't plan on using it too much, I think the Pittsburgh might be a little bit better of a way to go. Even if you have a floor jack, already. It's always nice to have a secondary backup and this thing being so lightweight and easily transportable, it's always nice to have that option if you unexpectedly need to take a jack somewhere or even if you're going on a road trip. It's nice to be able to throw this thing in the trunk of the car. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's a lot safer than using something like a scissor jack that your car typically comes with. Uh, it's still going to be able to lift a ton and a half. It might take a little bit more effort, but most people can justify spending an extra hundred dollars to have uh, an extra jack as a backup at home or being able to transport the jack easily depending on where you might need to take it versus this jack. This is exactly what you expect when you pay significantly more for something of quality. You can see the difference in the quality of the machining and the thickness of the materials being used. You also have a little bit of a wider range of motion. This will go a little bit lower and it'll go a little bit higher. Probably the most important thing is the confidence inspiring aspects of this jack. It is significantly easier to lift this jack under the same load compared to this jack. Not only because of the handle, but probably just because of the way it's set up. And then being able to also crack the release valve on this very gently and very softly is really, really nice. This thing, you have to put more effort into it and make sure you don't go too much and have the car slam down quick because then you end up trying to close the valve real quick. With this thing, it doesn't take a lot of effort to start opening the valve, feel it opening, and then very carefully bring the car down. That's a big concern with cars that are very low to the ground. You don't want to slam them on the ground with a floor jack. So as you would expect with an expensive jack, the overall feel 
and architecture of this jack is much more confidence inspiring and you basically get what you pay for here. So uh, both of these jacks will do the same job, but it really comes down to your budget, how much you wanna use it, and really if you're willing to spend the money to go with something more expensive versus not spending the money if you really feel you don't need to. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.